we are going to talk about the voice of the trumpet. <laughs> oh, bear with me. This is take four. I usually, I usually can bang these out in the first take, but there's a couple things I, I had to keep doing it. So uh, anyway, all right. As a musician, um, I, in reading scripture, when the scripture is talking about sounds, I've always found them interesting. Obviously, it's a book that doesn't make sounds. You're reading words, right? But it talks about sounds. And one of the sounds is the voice of the trumpet, right? So I'm speaking to you with the voice of a mouth, right? But there, the scriptures talk about a voice of a trumpet, okay? And it also talks about a sound of a trumpet, all right? So there are different ones that do different things. And we're, we're going to see how important this is, guys. This is very, very important. But I always thought that was interesting, this expression, the voice of the trumpet. Now, you can just do a word search, and you can, uh, and you can find these uh, examples. But some of them you can't find, because when we're reading it in English... We just see either voice or sound, and you know we don't pay much attention. You kind of think to yourself, well, you know, there's a guy there with a trumpet. So if you hear sound of the trumpet, you think well, there's a guy holding a trumpet blowing it, <coughs> right? But there's other examples in heaven where you have the Lord Jesus appearing to John, and John hears the voice of a trumpet and he turns around to see who is that and he sees one like the son of man he sees the lord jesus but he doesn't see the lord jesus holding a trumpet he just sees the lord jesus so what's going on his voice the voice of his mouth sounds like a trumpet okay and then there are other times where it's an actual sound of a trumpet okay so in heaven things are like that where um, you can, uh, you know, be, speak out of your mouth, but then you, obviously you sing, everything sings, everything is alive, everything is worshiping God. Even the anointed cherub had musical instruments built into his body. So he just reverberated sound and worshiped God. Isn't that amazing? As a musician, I would just be able, love to be able to just emanate sound. Jeez, I, I would take singing. I would, I would love to be able to do that. <laughs> Uh, I do it, but, you know, anyway. Uh, so these voice of a trumpet, okay? So the, and some examples of this, guys, is when the children of Israel were congregated at, you know, the, at Mount Sinai, and the Lord appeared in great glory in a dark cloud and thunder and lightning on the mount, they heard the sound that was a voice. So it was really the voice of a trumpet. Okay, so what is that? That's God's voice. Oh, there's voice of great glory, reverberating sound. All right? But it sounds like a trumpet. So what happens is you have the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, and you have the voice of the trumpet. And then you have the Lord Jesus appearing to John, and what does he hear? He hears the voice of the trumpet. And the voice says, I am the Alpha and Omega. So it's important that we realize that there's a voice of the trumpet and a sound of the trumpet. Okay? Now let's look at, let's look at the story in Exodus, right? So we have Moses um, bring the children of Israel to Mount Sinai. God says, set bounds, bring the people, right? And so God comes in glory. They hear the sound. They're like, we don't want to go into that sound. We're afraid. We don't want to, um, you know, you, you go, Moses. You go. We'll, we'll, we'll go over here. All right? And so Moses does. So it says that the people uh, stood afar off, but Moses went into thick darkness. And that word in, in, in uh, Hebrew is arapel, thick darkness. So God dwells in thick darkness, right? So Moses was comfortable going into thick darkness, right? But he also took with him 70 elders with 
Nahab and Abihu, right? And so they came up to the mount, and Moses took them there, and then God took them into heaven. And so they were on the sea of glass, and they could see the sapphire stone, and they had communion, they had the bread and the wine, and they saw God face to face, right? Um, and they didn't die, right? So let's think about what's happening here, guys. So you have the great multitude, just like Revelation chapter 7, that came out of the great tribulation. And then you have 72 elders that were caught up into heaven. Well, what's 72 times 2? It's 144. So the 144 are like the elders that were caught up into heaven, right? They were not afraid of God. They, were, they went like Moses. They went into thick darkness. Okay? And they saw God face to face and they had communion. All right? Now, amazing thing. We talked about this in uh, some of the other messages when we look at the 144,000 and the great multitude. But remember that there were 600,000 males. Now, if we do basic demographics and we say, well, there's probably 50, 50 and there's probably another 600,000 females, right? And if you remember our statistic on the remnant, it's 0. .00006. So if you take that number and you multiply it by 1.2 million, you come up with 72. So the 72 and the elders directly represent the Seven, the 144,000 in the last days. And if you haven't watched the other videos, basically if you take 2.3 billion, multiply it by 0. .00006, um, you come up with 144,000. So um, anyway, what I'm saying is statistically, they say there's a third of the uh, world's population is Christians. And if you do that statistic, you'll see that of those, the remnant, just like the elders, there's only 144,000. But we're going to focus on the voice of the trumpet because there's something about what Moses did when he went into thick darkness that we need to do because it's the, the voice and the call of God is now. It's not when the Son of Man returns in the clouds. You have to answer the voice now. You have to hear what I'm saying now. You have to seek God now. You have to realize that there's only 144,000 seats on the boat, and you got to get in. If you don't, you go through what everyone else does, all right? So um, we've been going through all the examples of this. So what I'm getting at is the voice of the trumpet is the voice of God's call and the voice of what, uh, what, whichever catching away you're a part of as a believer in the Lord Jesus, okay? So... Um, let's look at it, and in, in what we're going to do, again, we're going to look at some Greek words. Normally when you study New Testament and you study the Greek, it pretty much is what, you know, um, it says, you know, Greek translates to English decently. It's not like Hebrew where it could be multiple um, different, you know, things that you're trying to figure out. Um, but there's some things that we miss out reading in English that we see in the Greek, and, it, and they're critically important, Okay. But well, let's first look at the distinct sound um, that we can find Paul talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And even things without life-giving sound, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 7, whether it be pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or what is harped? Okay. So even think about it. Think about with music that when, you, when you're playing music and you're creating music and you're creating sounds and then you have words and you have vocals to the sounds, if the words and the vocals don't relate to the music, it's just weird, right? If you're playing, you know, death metal to classic music, it's like, what? It's just bizarre, right? Um, but there's a distinction in the sound that supports the voice. So the music supports the voice, all right? And so how do we know what is the distinction of the voice? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare to battle? So now we're talking about war. This isn't just entertainment. 
Now it's the trumpet is heralding something. It's telling you to do something. And so for the children of Israel, if you read Numbers 10, you'll see that they had the long silver trumpets. And they blew them, and the congregation in different uh, orders would congregate at the uh, tabernacle. Right? So if you don't know what the distinction is of the sound, you're not going to show up. Okay? And we're talking about the catching away. We're talking about the Lord's return. So this is critically important. Um, now, in context of what Paul is talking about here, he's talking about the interpretation of tongues. So likewise, ye, except you utter the tongue, easily understood, how shall be known what is spoken? Um, there are many different kinds of voices, and none of them without um, that are that are not without signification. Therefore, I know not the meaning of the voice. Uh, excuse me. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall uh, be unto him that speaks a, par a barbarian, and he that speaks to me a barbarian. So, if you don't understand the language of what someone's speaking, if it's a different language, what good is it? So, that's what he's saying in terms of tongues, but he's also talking about sounds. Not just sounds, sounds, voices of the trumpet. Okay? And so, we're going to come back to 1 Corinthians later. But what we're talking about here, guys, is there's a, a voice of the trumpet. And there's a sound of the trumpet, okay? So, when we look at scriptures that describe the return of the Lord, we can see, based on the either voice of the trumpet or sound of the trumpet, who is the sound going to? Who is congregating? Who, who is this going out to, okay? Um, and so, if we go to uh, Matthew 24, verse 31... Um, and he shall uh, send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. Now, if we read that in English, we think, oh, well, there must be a guy with a, an angel with a trumpet blowing it, right? That's what that is. But in the Greek, the, the word for sound is phone, you know, just like spelled like a phone, right? And phone is a voice. It's me speaking to you. It's a voice. It's a a voice of a trumpet. It's not an actual trumpet. So some voices, this we, we saw the, the Father's voice was the voice of the trumpet. The Lord Jesus' voice to John was a voice of a trumpet. They're, they weren't holding a trumpet. It is the voice of the trumpet. They shall gather together his elect. So here you have the voice of the trumpet gathering the elect. So here, what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about the gathering of the 144,000. Because this is not a trumpet that exists within the seven trumpets of the Great Tribulation. This is the voice of the trumpet. See how important that is? Okay. But when we read in English, it's just, oh, it's the sound of the trumpet. So there must be a guy blowing a trumpet. And then you think, well, where does that fit? Because... How does that relate to the trumpets, or what you know? What's going on? Is this is this the great multitude? Who is this? Well, in verse twenty nine, Jesus makes it very clear that he's talking about a description of the sixth seal. So he just finished describing the sixth seal, and then he said that, and then after the sixth seal, the Son of Man will appear, right? And what does he appear with his angels with the sound of the trumpet? No, the voice of the trumpet. So the voice is, it sounds like a trumpet, it's not an actual trumpet. Because in Revelation, the trumpets haven't started yet. Okay? And so I hope you can see how important this is. All right? Um, and another example of this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? Now here, in 1 Thessalonians 4, we looked at this before in the resurrection... Um, but now let's look at it in terms of the voice, all right? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The resurrection. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now shout here is a command. It's a command. It's a military command to uh, assemble troops. And it's only used here, so not a lot of context. With the voice, phone, of the archangel. All right, and so, okay, wait a minute, now we have an archangel. But we have the phone of the archangel, right? And so we have the phone of the trumpet in Matthew 24. So again, these are not 
actual trumpets. These are phone voices, right? And now we can also find out some interesting information about this, about an archangel appearing on the scene, and resurrection in Daniel 12. And at that time shall Michael, and we know Michael is an archangel, um, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since there was a nation. Um, even to that same time, to that time, your people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them which sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to ever, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Okay, so what do we have? We have Michael standing up, all right? And then in Thessalonians, we have the voice, phone of the archangel, okay? And then what do we have? We have the resurrection. Paul talks about those that sleep. That's the resurrection. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and turn away many to righteousness, okay? So the, the, the wise or the shining, the, the shining ones is the resurrected bodies. Now that happens with the 144,000 and the great multitude. The 144,000 would be those that would still be... Um, ministering during the seven trumpets and so they would be warning those um, about you know uh, the gospel okay but again we see Michael the archangel standing up and then we have the resurrection so we have something very similar happening in Thessalonians 4 okay uh, the voice of the archangel with the trump of God now it doesn't actually say that the trump of God is making a sound it just says the phone of the archangel and we'll see you're going to see where that's important guys and the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up now we're going to look at this a little bit later but in greek this is harpazo okay uh together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air so shall we ever be with the lord so what i'm getting at here guys is the description of what is taking place is uh, the voice of the archangel. And so that's very similar to what Jesus was talking about, or it is the same event that what Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24. So this is the elect. So it's the resurrection of the dead, and it is the 144,000 that's taking place here. Okay? Um, and so we can see clearly that there's a resurrection of the dead in, Matthew, in Daniel 12, and then we also have Michael appearing on the scene. Um, whether Michael is that archangel, you know, we don't know, but there's something very similar transpiring. Now, let me give you another example of, well, you know, you know of the voice of the trumpet. That isn't the actual trumpet, all right? And that would be in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And after the things, and that would be after the seven churches, um, again, John says, um, he heard a voice of a trumpet. Again, voice in that verse is phone. And he said the same voice I heard earlier. And that was the voice of the Lord Jesus in Revelation 1, verse 10. Okay? And again, in Revelation 1, 10, the Lord Jesus, his voice is the voice of the trumpet. And that's the same voice that we find in um, Exodus. That was the great sound. So it's the Lord Jesus' voice back then as well. So when he appears to John, he's using the same voice or the same sound. Okay, Even though John knew him all that time, you know, he didn't sound like a trumpet all those times he was on the earth. But when he comes as king and priest, he sounds like a trumpet. Okay, In Revelation 4.1, the, the voice, phone, of uh, the trumpet is... Um, he says, come up hither. There's a catching up, right? So it's important that we understand that there is a sound of an actual trumpet, and we're going to find out in a second. But then there's a, a voice, phone of a trumpet. And what that voice does shows that there's a distinction based on different circumstances or different people groups or what have you, okay? So we know that the great multitude is in comes out of the tribulation. They come out of the, at the sound of the seventh trumpet. Now that's the actual sound of the trumpet. That is not, that's an angel blowing a trumpet. It says it right there. That is not the voice of the trumpet. 
Okay? So what I'm getting at is the elector called with the phone of the trumpet. The great multitude is caught with the salpizo. Okay, so let's find the salpizo. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse. Well, I'll start with um we'll start with verse 51. And again, these are common scriptures. Um, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Okay, so now we have a clear description of a trumpet, but not just any trumpet, the last one. And we know in Revelation that there are seven. And so this would obviously be the seventh trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound. Again, in English you think, oh, the trumpet will sound. That's the same thing that happened in Matthew 24, 31. No, it's not. For the trumpet shall sound is salpizo in the Greek. And that is only used as it relates to the actual trumpet. It's not the voice of the trumpet. It's not a phone of the trumpet. It's a salpizo. It's the actual trumpet blowing. And we which uh, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So guys, this word... For the trumpet shall sound, salpizo, is used in Matthew chapter 6 when it talks about when you give your alms at the temple, don't sound the trumpet before you. Make a big deal, right? Other than that, every single example of this word, salpizo, is all seven trumpets in Revelation. So you have it right here, the last trump, and the trumpet shall sound, salpizo, and then all the trumpets, if you just search this word, I, I encourage you to use like blue letter or some tool, click on this word, sound it, and you'll see it. You'll see Matthew 6, and then you'll see here, and everywhere else it's Revelation 8 through 11. So every time it's used, it's used of the actual trumpets and the guy blowing it in heaven. Okay? This is not the voice of the trumpet. So you can see that there is a voice of the trumpet, which is for the... 144,000. It, it was for John being caught up into heaven, right? But when it comes to the great multitude, it is the actual trumpet blowing. And it's the last one here, okay? So it's very important that we see that and we get the distinction of the sound so that we know who is this talking about. There's more than one catching away, okay? So you have one that takes place when the 144,000 are sealed. And the Lord Jesus appears in the clouds with the what? Phone of the trumpet. Then you have another one, which is the salpizo of the trumpet, the actual trumpet being blown by the angels. So, and this one makes it clear it's the last trump. So guys, if people are talking to you about, well, it's we believe in uh, the pre-tribulation uh, you know, rapture, guys, we're in the tribulation now. If you actually look at the details of what you know Jesus was saying, he said that, um, you know, Immediately after the tribulation of these things, the Son of Man would appear. And he described the sixth seal. And he described the beginning of sorrows. We went through it in the last video. So the first six seals are tribulation, the beginning of sorrows. Then he went on to describe the great tribulation. Now if you look that up in the Greek, you'll see that it's mega thalipsis. Okay, and that expression, great tribulation, or mega thalipsis, is used three times. Jesus said it as it relates to Daniel's seven-year period, okay, or the 70th week. Um, we might get into another uh, thing on that, but um, he also said it when he talked about the church at Thyatira. He said that those that believe in Jezebel's doctrine um, and don't repent will be in the Great Tribulation, okay? Um, and then he also um, uses it as it relates to the great multitude. John says, well, who are these? These are the mega thalipsis. These are those that came out of the great tribulation. And if we use that expression, we can go back to the Lord Jesus. We take it from um, Revelation 7, and we take that expression, and we go back to the Lord Jesus in Matthew 24, and Jesus makes it very clear that that period of the seven years is the great tribulation and that's where those people come out of but they come out of the midpoint at this last trump 
So I, this is just so clear and so obvious through the scriptures, guys. So even the expression pre-tribulation rapture is a wrong teaching because we're in it now. And is there a catching away? Yes. But there's only 144,000 people that are going to be caught. Just like there was only 72 people that went into the mountain with Moses. Okay? Just like there was only 120 people in the upper room. It's the same thing, guys. It's the same thing. So, um, but it's very clear where we have to follow the scripture. We have to follow what Jesus said. Heaven and earth pass away, but his words would not pass away. These words are all important. Okay? And I'm trying to have these words speak for themselves. I'm not, you know, I mean, I believe that there's multiple raptures. Okay? So you have the elect, you have 144,000 at the sixth seal. Then you also have the seventh trumpet, right? And so, but this word is thrown around rapture, like, and it's like, well, what are you talking about? What rapture? Um, there's lots of raptures in the Bible. Which one are you talking about? Um, there's no actual word rapture in the Bible. It is what we looked at before, harpazo. And, and so, so examples of rapture are, you know, Acts 8, where you have Philip, he preaches the eunuch, and then what? The spirit caught him away. Caught him is harpazo. So he's on the earth and he goes somewhere else on the earth. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, Paul is caught up into heaven. So Paul's on the earth, he's caught up in the heaven, and, he, and he's back on the earth, right? Um, and then we looked at uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Also, Revelation 12 is the woman clothed with the sun. Her child is caught up, harpazo, into heaven. And again, I believe that's the great multitude. Okay? That's caught up before the, the Lamb and before the throne. All right? And that's, again, in, in the other video. But what I'm getting at is there's lots of examples of rapture. Okay? You have the voice um, from heaven going to the two witnesses, saying, come up hither. So you have this voice to um, John in Revelation 4.1, come up hither. The voice of the two witnesses, come up hither. Right? So that is a voice. Then you have a salpizo, an actual trumpet, for the great multitude. So it's important that we understand what the scriptures are talking about and what the sound is doing, or what is taking place. Because the scriptures in multiple places describe the same thing, but if, if people put them all in different places, it doesn't make sense. But when we look at the voice of the trumpet, and we look at the sound of the trumpet, we can see that they're not all the same thing. They are distinct. Okay, some of them deal with the seven trumpets. Some of them deal with um, the elect. All right. So I hope that's clear, guys. If you, um, you know, uh, have anyone says no, I don't believe what you're saying. You know, you can use something like this. It's very simple, and you can say, well, um, you know, keep in mind these scriptures: First Corinthians 15, First Thessalonians 4, Matthew 24:31. Use all these scriptures, and that, you, that way you can say, look, what Jesus is talking about here is the sixth seal, and that's when the 144,000 are taken. When, in Revelation, and, and, and then you have you know, 144,000, you have a great multitude. It's very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, that is the great multitude, um, because that's the last trumpet, and it's the it's Salpizo trumpet. Okay. So I hope that's simple. I hope that's clear. Let me know if there's any questions on that. Um, you know, this is a, a real simple way of describing this um, and letting the scriptures speak for themselves. And so, um, again, if you have any questions, let me know if you find this helpful and you've talked about this and it's been unclear to someone or there's been any confusion, share it, like it, you know, get the word out, guys. Let's get the word out, okay? So love you guys. God bless you and we'll uh, do some more soon, all right?